This aircraft's got twin head up displays in it. It was the first transport aircraft to be installed with twin head up displays. Uh, when I first sat in it, I couldn't see any, any, anything on the display. It was just a piece of glass. And it turns out that um, the eye box was only designed for 5th percentile male to 95th percentile male. And it didn't, wasn't designed for women who were smaller. But this aircraft in the US has flown like women as short as five foot two fly this aircraft in the US. Um, so they had to redesign the seat so that you could get it high enough to get into the hut eye box. And what that meant was that when the seat was higher, the control wheel would hit your legs. So they had to make the control wheel smaller so that you could get it around without it contacting your legs. And of course you make the control wheel smaller, you change the forces in roll, and then the aircraft's not harmonized properly. So it changed the flight characteristics of the aircraft. With an aircraft like this, uh, if you've got your four engines and you know two of them fail on one side and two are still going, it's going to want to do this. Um, this particular aircraft, um, because of the handling characteristics of it, it could actually get into a side slip without any real feel in the front cockpit. Um, one of the pilots got to 40 degrees side slip at one point on this thing and didn't realise they were there. Uh, we didn't really know what to do about this, so we called up all the olds and bolts that tested the original aircraft. And they'd been testing in the late 50s, early 60s. They could remember the side slip flight. This was in the late 90s. So this is something, you know, they're like, no, you know, <laughs> it'll change ends, do not go there. So we ended up having to put um, a side slip indicator in the cockpit as well um, to, so that the pilots would not exceed the side slip with all sorts of warnings and cautions associated with it.